dear students welcome in class of agriculture informatics today in lecture we will discuss about the memory concepts of computers and the various units used to define the storage capacity of the con computer the computer memory is the space for storage in the computer where the data can be processed or the instructions can be processed and are stored it can be divided into large number of a small units called cells and the location of cell can be defined as a unique address that varies from 0 to 1 less than the memory size if the computer has 64000 words as memory size then this memory unit has 64 into 1024 that is 65536 memory locations the address of this location varies from 0 to 65535 since 0 has been included therefore the total number of location is still 65536 the memory is a hardware device which is assembled on the motherboard it is utilized for performing the crucial activities by the operating system of the computer there are various type of memory concepts that are related to the computer memory like virtual memory swapping buffering paging blocks internal fragments and external fragments the memory are of two types one is for storing the, per the data permanently while the other is for the operating operation purpose memories in the computer are of two different types the one is primary memory or main memory while the other is secondary memory a third type of memory that is called as cache memory is also present in the computer which is of great significance and we will discuss in the later slides so here you can observe that what different kinds of primary memory as a ram or rom what different kind of secondary memories as a floppy disk hard disk cd dvd pen drive these different memories are being used in the computer system for performing the various operations and the storage of the database the primary memory is also called as main memory which determines the active memory space of a computer where all the data and the instructions under the functioning are being
under the functional conditions. The primary memory is limited and the data is being lost from this space in case the power is switched off. This is made up of semiconductor device. The semiconductors are those where which have conductivity range between the conductors and insulators. Some of the important one is silicon, germanium, gallium, There are some compounds also like gallium arsenate which act as a semiconductor. <clears throat> In the main memory, processing of the data and instruction is being carried out and is stored in the secondary memory when we save it. It is of two subcategories the RAM and the ROM. Random is RAM is the random access memory and is of two types SRM and DRM static random access memory and dynamic random access memory. As SRM retains its contain till the supply of power and is having six transistor per bit. <coughs> the transistor of a system is component which is responsible for amplification of electrical signal. The dynamic RAM requires regular refresh cycles to avoid any kind of loss of its content and is having one transistor and one capacitor per bit. Capacitor is what it is the component which store the electrical energy in it. DRAM is also used for cache memories that we will discuss later on. SRM is faster but it is more expensive than DRM. The second category of primary memory is ROM, which is called as read only memory. So, as per the name, it is responsible for <coughs> the storage of data which can be only read and is in use when we turn on our computer. It contains basic input-output sy uh, system BIOS. This is non-volatile in nature. And there are three types of ROM, P-ROM, EP-ROM, double EP-ROM. P-ROM is the programmable read-only memory. which clearly confirms that we can't alter or we can't change. We don't have any right as it is being written by manufacturer company. When we purchase a blank PROM chip, we can write it but the for the programming purpose special tools such as PROM program programmers are required. In common PCs, <coughs> mainly PROM is used 
as we don't have to change the data. EPROM is erasable PROM, which means the data can be erased, can be changed. This data can be changed by using ultraviolet radiations or rays and is more expensive than the PROM. Double EPROM is called electronically erasable PROM, where the data of ROM can be erased by electrical charge. E double E P ROM can be erased one byte at any time rather than erasing the entire chip by ultraviolet rate. <coughs> the main characteristics of main memory or primary memories can be summarized here as these are the semiconductor materials, it is volatile in nature. as the data is lost when the power is switched off it is the active memory of the computer and is faster than secondary memories a computer is not able to run without the primary memory and that's why it is being always advised to keep maximum space in the ram You might be aware about the C drive of your computer, which is the most active part of your computer. Once you open any file, any folder, the open component fall under the primary memory RAM. Secondary memory. This is an external memory and is non-volatile in nature. It is relatively slower than the main memory. However, it is being used to store the data or information permanently. CPU, it is central processing unit, is unable to access this memory. So it is always being accessed through the input-output routine. So the content of secondary memories are first transferred to the main memory and then CPU is able to access it. The common example is disk, CD-ROM, DVD. The common characteristics of secondary memory includes it is a backup memory, non-volatile mem memory and it can be magneting or optical memories that we will discuss. The data is permanently stored even the power is switched off. As we know that computer will not run without main memory but it can run without the secondary memory. The speed is slower than the primary memory. The link given below contains a good information regarding the memory of the computer. There are two methods for access of data from the secondary memory. One is the sequential memory, sequential method, where the data can only be accessed through the sequential step or line by line. You can't skip. You have to go through line by line till the desired data is not being identified. The example is magnetic tape. The direct method includes such kind of memory where we can directly go to the information 
where we want that is the magnetic disc optical disc secondary memory or storage devices of different kinds are the first one that we discuss we are discussing is magnetic tape as we know that it is a sequential in nature as you might have seen the music cassettes so even you have to come to any point in the cassette you have to run through the complete magnet complete cassette magnetic tape is the plastic tape which is coated with magnet it is used to store music movie we are we can't use this to store the data because if you want to come to a particular data point we have to run through or till we are coming to the point of observation so obviously it is going to take longer time another one is the magnetic disk where the data is going to be saved automatically when we click over the save button it is non volatile in nature and keep the data even the power is switched off in this storage device we store or install the software for the system some of the magnetic disk include hard disk floppy disk hard disk is also called as hard drive or fixed drive in this place we store data or information which can be retrieved for further use we install or op operating system or the software to run our computer the average computer today comes with 250 to 500 gb hard drive <clears throat> floppy disk is the flat round or removable in nature it is of mylar plastic coated with ferric oxide it can be read or written by floppy disk drive and is external storage device which can be used to transfer the data from one computer to another one the size of such floppy disk earlier was 5/14 inch which has later 3 which later converted to 3 and 1/2 inch format at present its use is negligible as many alternatives in form of pen drive optical disk are available the optical disk are flat circular plastic disk coated with material it is of small size with huge storage capacity however for its functioning there is a need of optical disk reader in the computer so there are two types of optical disk cd and dvd cd the compact disk it is used to store the data movie music and software it can store up to maximum 80 minutes of continuous video recording and 700 mb of data space <coughs> the 
there must be need of CD drive while you want to use the CD in your computer. There are two types of CD, CD-ROM and CD-Read-Write. DVD is digital versatile disc with high capacity storage for mainly movie, music, software etc. with the capacity of storage as 4.7 GB. This div the DVD drive may be may also be used to run the CD disc. The DVD can be DVD ROM or DVD read and write. The another one is the cache memory, which is a very high speed semiconductor memory and is used to speed up CPU. It is it acts as a buffer between CPU and the main memory. It contains the data and the program which are most frequently used by the CPU. And as you might be aware that when the cache memory takes longer time you need to clean it and many times you have cleaned by using C cleaner in your mobiles. The parts of data or programs which are transferred from the disk to catch a memory by using operating system and it is accessible by the CPU. In order to accelerate the speed of transferring data between primary and secondary memory, catch a memory is of great significance. What are the advantages of having cache memory it, which may be listed below? It is faster than the main memory. It consumes less access time and the program which is stored here can be executed within very short period of time. This, this is able to store the data for temporary uses. It has many disadvantages also. The cache memory has limited capacity, means very small capacity and it is very expensive. After memory concept we must be aware about the units of memory and you might be well aware about these things. The various measurement given below in form of bits and bytes. The bit is the smallest unit of computer memory. One bit is actually the binary digit. When eight bits are combined it make one byte and 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte 1024 kilobyte is equivalent to 1 megabyte and so on 1 GB, 1 TB, 1 petabyte, 1 exabyte, 1 zettabyte, 1 yottabyte and 1 bronotobyte and finally 1 geobyte so geobyte is the highest memory unit so these are the units of memory in which we measure the storage capacity of a computer. So this is all for today. We will discuss the other component of computer in the next class. Thank you. Thank you for today.